Hey my friends, in this video I'm gonna show you the top 10 chord shapes and chord progressions that we can learn from one of my favorite post-rock albums ever, The Earth is Not a Cold Dead Place by Explosions in the Sky. And since there are three guitar players in the band, sometimes I'm gonna combine parts into a full chord, but nonetheless you can learn beautiful open chord shapes and lots of sus two chords in their music. So let's start at number one in the first song, First Breath After Coma, there's a part that goes like this. So we have beautiful voicings here. So we start with an A major triad. Pretty common. And then there's what I call the Pink Floyd voicing. So we have a G sharp minor seventh. But that's the Pink Floyd voicing, right? That we are used to here like this. Right? So I don't know if they've listened to Pink Floyd a lot, but this is the Pink Floyd voicing of a minor 7 chord. And then what is cool is that they take the G sharp minor triad, but they put at the end an open 6 string, which creates a great voicing of an E major 7 chord. Right? It's like the G sharp minor bar chord, but with an open E. So you see, they will use E major 7s really often in their music and in this album. At number 2 on the song, The Only Moment We Are Alone, we start with like a C, so just one note like this. So we think that the song is gonna be in C major, but then we play some really simple intervals at the bottom, so by adding our ring finger on the 5th fret on the 6th string, it creates an A minor chord. And then we're gonna create an F power chord. And then a G sus4. then the F power chord again. So what I like about their music is the simplicity of the parts, but it's so deep because of that, because they create the chords to their simplest expression. So this is the simplest expression of an A minor chord we could find. It's like the A and the C. So the roots and the minor third. And then it's the simplest expression of an F power chord the F and the C, and then simpl simplest expression of a G sus4, right? It's just the G and the C, and they don't even resolve it, so I love it just to use simple chords like these, and in, in low voicings like these. Uh, later in the song, at number three, we have this super cool part like this. <laughs> So we have super cool chords like these. So we have like an open voicing of an A. But then when we do the little, it creates a super interesting chord. It's like an A minor add 11. Like this. You could even put the, the open first. Super uh, cool chord right here. And then we have a C sus 2. When we a C sus2, and then if we take the same exact shape and we put it one string higher from the fourth string, it creates an F major 7 sus2. So like I said, they, they love the sus2 chords, right? Super cool, and then we have a G spread triad. That I teach a lot on the channel and on my free mini course that I offer on my website as well. So it's really cool to have those. Th 
And later in the song, at number four, it's uh, also the simplest expression of chords, but I like to use it like them with open strings. So we have something like... So if you've never used the spread triads in uh, open voicings like this with a, a, an open string, you have to know these chords, right? So this is an A minor, so open fifth, and then the tenth fret on the fourth string. And then it's the same thing from the sixth string. And it's just, it sounds super thick, like on here on the fretboard. It doesn't sound the same to just do like an open sixth and third, right? It's, there's something better, and if you want to play them as major chords, you have to play the 11th fret. So it's great chords to know. Let's go to another song in the song Six Days at the Bottom of the Ocean at number five. This is a part that I absolutely love. So the song starts like this. So we have such beautiful chords with beautiful frictions here. So the first chord is a G sharp minor with an added ninth. It goes like this. So we don't think often to play it like this and have open strings when you're, we're playing on the fourth fret, right? If I were trying to do a G sharp minor with an added ninth, I would think to do that. But I can play it with the open second, right? And I love this chord so much that I used it in one of my own songs. Uh, it's the song that's called The Words I Could Not Say. Right, so you have this chord right here. And they actually play the same one, but from the, the eighth or the ninth fret, uh, depends on how you see it. So this creates a C sharp minor seven with a sus two, if you want. So C sharp minor seven, sus two. And then I love when they play it uh, right here too. So that's another sus two. It's an E sus two and an open vo voicing. So they play the major third, and then they suspend it. And that creates another beautiful sus to voicing. At number six later in the song, we have some more simple triads. We have like a D minor, followed by a C major. But what I like about this progression is that the bass is gonna add notes that are going to change the chords eventually. So we have a chord progression where we have D minor and C. Then we play the D minor again, but they add a B flat at the bottom, which creates a B flat major seven. And then they're going to play a, a G minor 7 without the third, and then an A minor. So I like the curve of this chord progression. It's like the root chord, and then the flat 7, flat 6, and then 4, 5, 1. So it's a really cool progression. So it's great to take the root, uh, especially with a minor triad like this, and put the flat six at the bottom to create a major seven. So I love that they did that here. Let's go to a next song, the song Memorial at number seven. Uh, I love what they did at the beginning of the song. It does.
So it's uh, really cool, this little voicing here. If you open the, the fifth right here and you play this voicing, it creates an A sus2 sus4. So it has both sus suspended on the second and the fourth. And then it resolves on the real A major triad, right? So it's rare that we think about doing a double suspensions with our a double suspension with our triad, right? So that's what they did here. And then it goes to a, a D. Uh, it's gonna be a D sus two again. But you can also open it like this. It's a really great voicing right here. So that would be a D minor at nine, and then a D sus two. And then they resolve to the A major, right? So that's what we call a minor plagal cadence. If we are in the key of A major, we play the four chord, but minor. It's like a super common, super common resolution. Sometimes it sounds cheesy a little bit, but I love how they used it right here. Let's go later in the song Memorial at number eight. We have those beautiful voicings that I kind of put all together and I combined many guitar parts together, but it goes like this. Right, so it, it does super cool voicings like these. So this should be an A add nine. And then we're gonna add little kind of suspensions or tensions in the chord. So this, this does an A six chord, right? So that's an A six. And then we're gonna play an A major seven. So I love this friction right here, right? And then later, that's gonna create an A minor with an added nine and an added 13 also. I don't even know how to categorize that chord because to me, it looks like an F with a, an F power chord with a sharp 11, where we play an A as the bass note instead, right? Uh, but you can call it whatever you want, it just sounds cool. <laughs> I love it. And then at number nine, now it's really the outro of the song. I love this part, it goes like this. I love it because now we are kind of in the key of E major, but we use the flat six, which is borrowed from the key of E minor. So we do modal interchange. We borrow from a different mode. So we borrow from E minor, even if we are in the key of E major. So we get that E open chord right here. And then we play with our index. And once again, that's going to create an E sus2. So I told you there are many, many sus2 chords in our music. And then we're playing a C major 7. And if we go to play that same note right here, that's going to create a C major 7 sharp 11. I love that voicing, right? So. And I love that the melody uses the little chromatic movement in all of these notes, right? Right, to have that little G natural and that G sharp, right? Sounds super great. And at number 10, we save the best for last. This is the song, Your Hand in Mine. I think it's the most known song on the album. And it's the chord progression that goes like this.
Ah, uh, such beautiful chords. So what are those chords right here? We have a C sharp minor chord that goes to a E sus two once again. And then we have a B add 11 like this. Uh, this one has, uh, sorry, this one has the note, the seventh fret on the second string. It's the last time that we open everything. And then we have an A add sharp 11. So this one is super spicy. So lots of frictions. And if we take the same shape, one string below, it just creates a regular E, e major chord. And then we have the other kind of B add 11, where we open the first two. Right, so C sharp minor, E sus two. And then you can play it like this. First uh, B add 11. A add sharp 11, E, and B add 11. So it's a really, really beautiful song. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and that you took many chord shapes that you can reinvest into your own music. If you want to go further with me and learn spread triad chords and more cool chords like these, I have a free course on my website. It's a crash course on spread triad chords. You can click on the first link in the description box. I'm giving you 45 minutes of free in-depth lessons with downloadable chord charts and exercises. So it's super valuable. I want you to check it out first link in the description box if you enjoyed my teaching my style and what I did in this video So it's my gift to you and uh, I uh, thank you very much for watching my video until next time Au revoir